Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris and Starlink recently came out with yet another new product called Starlink Maritime. And this is a really interesting product. It comes at a hefty price tag, but if you read through the fine print of Starlink Maritime, it also gives us some clues as to the future and direction of Starlink, not just the Maritime product, but other products as well. So let's talk about all of the details and we're gonna jump right into starlink.com slash maritime, which is the product page for this new product. As you can see here, it says high speed, low latency internet with up to 350 megabits download while at sea, $5,000 a month and $10,000 up front. One time hardware cost of $10,000. What do you get with that $10,000? Well, you actually get two of the high performance dishes. Those are the business class dishes. You also get two of the pipe mount adapters, but you do not get an ethernet port. They are still not including an ethernet port that has to be purchased separately. So scrolling down a bit, we can see connectivity at sea around the globe from merchant vessels to oil rigs to premium yachts. Starlink Maritime allows you to connect from the most remote waters across the world, just like you would at the office or at home. And they have a link here to check coverage. When you click on the check coverage link, it brings you to this PDF uh, that shows you the current and future coverage for Starlink Maritime. And like right now, as of the launch of Starlink Maritime, there really isn't a ton of coverage. Essentially, we just have all this sort of light blue shaded area around the United States, around Europe, and then some more around Australia, New Zealand, as well as parts of South America. So that says covered now, and essentially that's just basically like where they have regular Starlink terrestrial service, and then sort of a little bit off of the shoreline, looks like by at least, a, you know, 100 miles or so. Then we've got coverage starting in Q4 2022. So that's this sort of light blue band right here, as well as the light blue band down here at the bottom of the planet. Then we have coverage starting in Q1 2023, which is essentially going to be the rest of this map. Now, as far as timeline, uh, we've seen many, 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 many times from uh, Elon Musk's various companies that they come out with these timelines and then pretty rarely actually hit those timelines. So even though this says coverage starting in Q4 2022 or coverage starting in Q1 2023, whether those dates uh, are realistic, you know, time will tell. And I guess, you know, we'll see once those, uh, those times actually pass. All right, going back to the main page, if we scroll down, it says rugged enough to withstand rocket landings. Uh, which is kind of interesting, right? So this, they have a whole sort of case study done of when they used to use VSAT on their SpaceX uh, sort of rocket recovery ships. And of course they have remote operators that are checking, uh, you know, the rockets as they're landing and they're adjusting things and, you know, doing whatever job they need to do to ensure that those rockets land safely. And with VSAT, the latency of VSAT plus the cost uh, was greatly reduced by Star or SpaceX themselves using uh, Starlink on those ships. So they have a fleet of 10 ocean-going vessels, and they said previously they were paying over $165,000 per month for 25 megabit per second download and upload. And that's also sort of a metered plan, right? If you go over the amount of data that you're allotted for that plan, you get charged overage fees on top of the $165,000. So it looks like, you know, divided by 10 ships, they were paying about $16,500 per month per ship, plus whatever, you know, overage fees. So by switching to their own product, obviously they're saving a ton of money, uh, and they're just using this as the example for folks that have their, you know, own fleet of ships, like think, you know, cruise lines, or oil rigs, or, you know, things like that, just, just, your cargo vessels, right? These companies that have massive amounts of these big ships that they do need to keep an eye on that oftentimes are running fairly blind without any sort of internet connectivity or the internet connectivity they have is just super, super expensive. Starlink Maritime is designed to bring down those costs. And we'll do a little bit of a cost comparison. I'm not an expert in, you know, VSAT costs for Maritime fleets, but 
Uh, there is a little bit of a resource that I found for taking a look at some of that pricing, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. So you can see their difference in uh, internet cost, and then of course you can also see the comparison of sort of the image of the rockets they received uh, with the VSAT stuff, obviously very low resolution, very low quality, and highly latent, one to two seconds of latency, versus you know a much better picture due to the increased amount of bandwidth they received, as well as the lower latency. They said something really interesting in this case study as well. They also said, as the maritime industry moves towards an autonomous future, affordable low latency bandwidth to deliver terabytes of data back to shore command centers is paramount. And this is a really interesting point because if we're getting to a point where not only you know truck drivers uh, on the road delivering goods across the United States or across Europe or wherever, um, those have already been thought of as eventually becoming autonomous where they will just drive themselves from destination to destination. But I've never really thought about shipping fleets also becoming autonomous, but it kind of makes sense, right? If you have a shipping vessel that's just making the same, you know, track back and forth from like, you know, China to South America or China to the US or wherever, why wouldn't you be able to have that vehicle be autonomous and then have a control center somewhere where people are sitting there commanding these fleets of ships remotely and making whatever changes and adjustments they need to the weather conditions and the course of the ship and whatnot. They can make corrections uh, you know, remotely. So if you were going to set it up like that, where you had an autonomous fleet of vehicles, uh, whether they be ships or trucks or whatever, um, having super low latency, high quality, high bandwidth internet is going to be paramount because there's a lot of information that you need to shoot back and forth and you can't have latency in those situations. Um, so yeah, really interesting point uh, as part of this case study. And you can find that case study uh, right here. If you click on this where it says rugged enough to withstand rocket landings, just click on the learn more and that's a link to that PDF. So scrolling down, it says easy to install. Starlink Maritime have, uh, bears a small footprint, demands minimal above deck space and comes with an easy to install mount. It requires an unobstructed view of the sky. And actually they include two dishes for that very reason. Here we can see the front of a ship that has two of the Starlink dishes right on the front. But imagine if the dishes were mounted, you know, around here or around here, there, it might be blocked at some point, one or the other dish might be blocked by other stuff that's on the deck of the ship. So you ideally you'd get it up as high as you possibly can, but there's still maybe obstructions as far as masts and anything that sticks up higher than where you have the satellite dishes mounted. So they have two dishes that are both always connected and I guess working them in, working in tandem with each other uh, to maintain that uh, connection and clear line of sight regardless of what might be in the way of one or other of those dishes. And also, just like the Starlink for RVs, it's also pay as you go. Uh, so it says Starlink Maritime offers the ability to pause and unpause service at any time and it's built in one month increments, allowing users to customize the service to their individual needs. So essentially, when you log in and you unpause it, you're charged for the full month, right? If you, even if you do it on like the 29th of January, you're gonna get charged for the full month of January. If you do it on the 1st of February, you're gonna get charged for the full month of February. So now let's look through some of their um, FAQs because there's some interesting information that we can find in here. Um, what hardware comes with my Starlink Maritime order? So Starlink includes two high performance terminals and then these are the Starlink high performance dishes. So if we look here, we can see this is the standard Starlink. It's 50 by 30 centimeters, uh, more of a rectangular pattern. And then we have the high performance Starlink, which is not quite a square, but it's closer. It's a 57 by 51 centimeter or 22 by 20 inch dish. The other major difference that I can see between these two dishes, besides the size and the capability, as far as you know, being able to receive more bandwidth to the bigger dish, is that the High performance Starlink is IP56 rated, where the, high, the standard Starlink is IPv54. And if we scroll down to the sort of question here, is Starlink for Maritime waterproof, we can see what that means. So the first digit is for dust or solid particles, and an IP5X means it's dust protected, and it says ingress of dust is not entirely prevented, uh, but 
it must not enter in sufficient quantity to interfere with the safe op operation of the equipment. So basically it's dust proof, right? Uh, and then IPX6 can withstand powerful water jets, whereas the normal Starlink dish can withstand splashing of water. Okay, so they make that distinction here. Uh, water projected in powerful jets against the enclosure from any direction shall have no harmful effects. Basically, it's kind of the difference of having a dish out in your backyard where it might rain on it from time to time versus having it in the ocean where it might be getting pounded <laughs> with waves from all sides. Right, so it's a much more extreme environment as far as the uh, waterproofing required. Now, also in the FAQ here, it says Starlink Maritime customers will have the option to upgrade their actuated terminal to a flat panel antenna and mounting hardware designed for better durability in harsh environments at no additional cost when available in Q4 2022. So that is actually really interesting. They're releasing Starlink for Maritime just using the standard high-performance business class Starlink dish, but they're coming out with a different dish that you can upgrade to for free once it actually comes out. So it almost sounds like it's just a fixed flat panel dish, and then there's some sort of mounting accessory or mounting hardware that comes with it that probably actually actuates the disc, uh, you know, from the mount as opposed to from the dish itself, like the business class one does. Again, that's pure speculation on my part, uh, just reading into what it says here. Uh, what do you guys think about that part of it? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, so also in the Starlink FAQ, what are the limitations of Starlink Maritime? So just like all the other Starlink stuff, it is best effort service, although it will be priority service given the fact that it is the business class dish. It also makes note that Starlink is not intended or registered for use as a safety of life at sea service at this time, which I assume is some sort of uh, regulation for emergency equipment on vessels at sea. Uh, it is not regulated to those standards. And right now it says Starlink for Maritime should only be used in territorial waters where licensing is either held by SpaceX or the end user. Starlink Maritime is currently approved for use in the US. So they're being very careful about like, hey, here's where you can and can't use this product. And then they're also adding this now, FCC authorization notice, FCC authorization to Starlink for in-motion services in the United States has been granted on a non-interference protected basis. Uh, i.e., for example, unprotected basis with respect to operations in the 12.2 to 12.7 band. Therefore, Starlink's in-motion operations, including for vessels, must accept any interference received from both current and future services authorized in the band, even if such interference causes undesirable operations for Starlink services and its customers. What is this? What is this weird disclaimer they're throwing in here? Uh, it's because they're having a battle with uh, Dish Network right now, where Dish Network has bought up or is planning to buy up a big chunk of the 12 gigahertz band that Starlink uses. And Starlink is essentially saying, if Dish buys up this 12 gigahertz band, that would cause harmful interference to Starlink users more than 77% of the time and total outage of service 74% of the time, rendering Starlink unusable for most Americans. And because of this, fight that they're having with Dish Networks, they sent out a letter to all Starlink users urging them to essentially send a letter that they gave you a form letter to your local authorities, to the FCC, and just sort of say, hey, don't let Dish buy up huge chunks of the 12 gigahertz band because as a Starlink user, this is really going to affect my service. So that's that's a panic move from Starlink, as far as I'm concerned. They're very, very concerned. If they're going to the level of effort beyond lobbyists, beyond just lining people's pockets to make sure things go their way, if they're reaching out to their own customers and saying, you guys have to send in a letter to your to the FCC and to your local politicians that urge them not to let DISH take over this uh, 12 gigahertz um, band, that's serious stuff. So still not sure what's gonna happen there, but I will put a link to this article uh, down below in the description if you wanna read it for yourself. All right, so finally, let's talk about the cost of Starlink Maritime. Now, $10,000 up front, that's for two of the business class dishes, plus $5,000 a month that you can pause and unpause at any time. 
how does that line up with existing uh, maritime options? And apparently, it's quite a good deal, right? So we saw uh, we saw with the Starlink case study that they were able to save a pretty significant amount of money by utilizing their own product, basically taking their costs for a 10 vessel fleet from $165,000 per month with VSAT down to $50,000 per month with Starlink. Uh, also, I put a request out on Twitter and I said, does anyone have uh, an idea of how this pricing lines up with existing at sea internet connectivity? And uh, a gentleman by the name of Jesse Nowlin, at Mr. J Nolan on Twitter, uh, responded and had some really good information. He said, it's not pretty. At the top of the range is Inmarsat's Fleet Express, used by super yachts and large scale commercial vessels. This offers download speeds of 10 megabits. So remember Starlink is up to 350 megabits and starts at a hefty $35,760 for the satellite dish with data costs starting from $1,800 per month. So you've got a 35K plus dollar investment and then close to $2,000 a month. What does the $2,000 a month get you? Well, if we look at this picture right here, it's not much, <laughs> right? So uh, 500 megabytes of data is $1,245. Uh, dollars a month. That's with a three-year contract. So very, very expensive. And he goes on to say, it's worth noting that the Inmar kit, the Inmar Sat kit weighs upwards of 37 kilograms, which in United States speak means about 80 pounds for the satellite dish. Uh, so this is only suitable for very large vessels. And then he said, shout out to his buddy, Luke, for the info. So thank you, Luke. And thank you, Jesse. Appreciate that information. So essentially, while you and I might look at this and say, wow, $10,000 up front and $5,000 a month, apparently, compared to other at-sea options available today, that's actually kind of a bargain, right? Especially if you can get a solid 350 megabits with no data cap, right? It's unlimited data. It's just what's the speed and latency that you're getting that data uh, at. And again, if you have a fleet of vessels, if you have a, you know, a cruise line or a mega yacht or multiple mega yachts, as we can all hope we have someday, you know, oil rigs, uh, container vessels, whatever. This is probably uh, maybe one of the best options uh, for your fleet of ships that's going to be coming out anytime soon. And it might actually save those companies quite a bit of money to switch to Starlink instead of whatever they're doing today. Again, Really sad that the ethernet adapter is still not included in that $10,000, but what are you gonna do? All right, what do you guys think about Starlink for Maritime? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.